Now, the Bible says that the Christian life is hidden with Christ in God, and that is incredible truth there. But it's still a life lived out on earth. So the Christian must therefore give attention not only to his outward experience with God, but also to his outward relationship with his fellow man. This relationship that I have with God is lived out in front of others. Augustine called it the city of man versus the city of God. I have now placed my residency permanently in the city of God, but until I get there, I'm to live it in the city of man. And I, oh, there's so much to say about that. Although Christians exist in this world physically, spiritually, we are already citizens of heaven. Paul put it this way, writing to the church at Ephesus, Ephesians 2, verse 5. He said, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ by grace you have been saved, raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, present tense. All of this is possible as a result of you being saved, born again, repenting of your sins, believing the gospel, placing your faith in Jesus Christ. The power that raises believers out of death and makes them alive is the same power that energizes every aspect of the Christian life. Now, Paul wants us to see that our spiritual growth, joy, and fruitfulness require that we maintain a proper perspective on this world. So until we realize that basic truth and live it, we will be ineffective in reaching the world with the truth of the gospel. A.T. Robinson, Mikey Law called me not long ago and said, man, he's famous here at Oxford University. He was a Southern Baptist. They refer to A.T. Robinson as one of the greatest Greek scholars that ever lived. And for whatever reason, someone gave me his books early, early on. He's meant a great deal of speaking into my life. He speaks of the Christian as having to keep his feet upon the earth but his head in the heavens. He does not mean that we should never think about the things upon the earth, but that these should not be one's aim, our goal, or our master. Instead, there will be this difference. From now on, the Christian will view everything against the backdrop of eternity and eternal perspective and no longer live as if the world was all that mattered. So this will obviously give us a new set of values. So this passage unfolds the truth that serves as a starting point for practical holiness, a life of being set apart for Jesus Christ and clearly displays the power of heavenly living on earth. Now, I've got time for one major point today and then the Lord willing, Sunday week, I'll preach the second part. But here's what I want to ask this morning. Okay, we're talking about a believer's new life. Here is the question. What produced this life? 